Night Scopers. Greetings to, to all of you. Tonight we will continue on the subject of um, fivefold ministry. Uh, the Lord gave some, not all. So I want to greet everybody that is um, connecting in right now. Tonight is going to be a powerful uh, teaching. I really believe that it will give a lot of clarity to a lot of people. So uh, uh, I'm going to give uh, a bit of time for people to just uh, chime in. I thank you already for uh, the the love that is being released. So uh, just make sure that you connect with 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 people you know, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but also saints. Uh, saints that, uh, that have that needs clarity on the understanding of, of uh, fivefold ministry. So, just uh, 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 what you should do, you, you can you can invite your friends uh, to follow. Uh, so, um, um, I'm looking forward to 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 to, to um, for that teaching tonight. I wanna. Uh, I'm seeing people coming. Just write to me uh, in which area you're from, uh, the city that you're from. Uh, um, so people are coming. There's somebody here from France. Bonjour, soyez béni. Somebody from France. Uh, um, uh, my son from from Congo that is taking over Congo's here. Uh, uh, Prophet Joel Francis Tatou. Glory to God. P Columbia, South Carolina, Montreal. Uh, um, uh, so uh, that is that is chiming in. Uh, um, other people from other areas. Um, Hello, Father, I love you. Man, I love you too, son. Uh, uh, this is Prophet Joel Tattoo that, that is sending me his love. Um, it, it, so begin to share to your people. Prophet Hobbs is here. My daughter, Prophet Hobbs is here. Hi, Apostle. Hi, my daughter, bless you. Uh, Bonsoir de la Guyane. People from Guyana, St. Leonard City, Montreal is here. Uh, my wife is here. Hi, sweetheart. Bless you, uh, uh, baby. Um, uh, Montreal just begin to to to, uh, to let us just pray as we get ready we have Akisha hello apostle how are you uh, pastor Saf Safi fire woman from, from France bless you from France Guadeloupe Brazil is in the house uh, glory to God uh, Br Brazil is in the house I am really excited I'm really excited for what God is gonna do tonight so um, let us just pray as we uh, we have Connie, Apostle Connie Drummond, um, a daughter from Robbins, Georgia, that's here. USA, California is here. Glory to God for California that's here. So uh, um, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight for insight. Father, we have a blessing that we can use technology to release your word, to preach your gospel, and, and to teach your gospel. I pray, Father, that this time shall be anointed. This time, this time the, uh, of, of, of teaching shall be powerful. Father, bring light, bring understanding uh, to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I, I thank you, Lord. So let, I continue to see people chiming in from France. Uh, 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 wow, so people of France, imagine right now they're probably, it's three in the morning and you're there. Oh, just uh, 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 God bless you for the people that are there from France so late. Uh, people are still joining in. This is going to be awesome to, uh, tonight. It's, it's really, it, it really is. It's going to be awesome. Okay, uh, so uh, um, my subject uh, is the fivefold ministry. The Lord gave some, not all. That's the second part because uh, we started, uh, I think, Tuesday. Tuesday, we touched that subject, and tonight we want to continue in that subject. Fivefold ministry, the Lord gave some, not all. Scopers, uh, it is important to understand that leadership will always be the acid test of the success of any entity. Any entity that you that 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 uh, that you're in, or any entity that is that is established, leadership will always be the acid test of the success of that entity. Whether it's a business, a corporation, an association, a network, or a local church, the leadership uh, uh, will always be the acid test that tell us if that. Uh, a business or or, or 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 network or church will be successful so leadership will always be 
I start with this, will always be the acid test of success of any entity. Now, when it comes to the church, now when it comes to the church, the word says that Jesus gave gifts to the church to secure its upbringing and its growth. So even in the church, the Lord uh, uh, has set leaders to, for the perfecting, for the upbringing and for the growth of the church so Ephesians 4 11 and 12 we're going in slowly so you can so you can understand the revelation so Ephesians 4 11 and 12 says this and he himself speaking about Jesus and he himself gave some to be apostles some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and the verses verses 12 will give the reason he gave them is for this for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So literally, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are there for the equipping of the saints. Literally to perfect the saints, to make sure that the, the, the saints don't stay paraplegic and don't stay uh, weak. And so that the saints can be perfected so that they can do the work of ministry. So literally, it is important to know that it is not normal, it is not normal for a saint to be in a church for 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15 years and you're not perfected. It is not enough for you only to come and to receive uh, uh, blessings and to pray for your healing and pray for your deliverance. But you are called to be perfected. You are called to be equipped so that you can do the work of ministry. So the word says here again, verses 12, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. We're in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. And he, speaking about Jesus, gave some apostles, some prophets... Some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, and verses 12 will give the reason. The, the reason for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So literally, some sons of God are called to the leadership of the church. Some sons of God are called to the leadership of the church. So those, those, men, those sons that are called in the leadership, they're there for the perfecting. And the equipping of the people of God. You are called to be equipped. You are called to be perfected. You cannot just be in a church where you come as an audience to just receive a healing or a deliverance once in a while. You are called to be equipped. There's a reason why you are on this planet. And this reason for it to be fulfilled. God has set five different ministries. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. And they are there to perfect you. So you can be ready for the work of ministry. Now notice Jesus did not give all. The word said some apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some pastors, some teachers. So, so it is not all. We cannot all be fivefold ministers. I said something important right there. We cannot all be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It is not normal to go on the internet, to go on Facebook, and we have more apostles and prophets than saints. I said something right there. You should have just give me some love right there for what I just said. Right there, right there. You need to give me more love than that. It is not normal to have on Facebook more apostles and more prophets than saints. God gave some. He did not give all. He did not give all. We cannot have more leaders than saints. And right now, uh, shockingly, I mean, there's some churches that have 20 people and they have 50 leaders. How can you have a church with 20 saints and have 15 leaders? It is not normal. So God gave some. So the Lord gave some, not all. Some apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some pastors and teachers. There's some, not all. So there's another verse that separates the tree of these gifts. The gifts, the fivefold ministry gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 will separate them. And 1 Corinthians 12, 28 will say this. And God had set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. 
thirdly teachers. The church of Jerusalem had 12 apostles. Now we have 12, 12 apostles. We have 12 apostles with 12 churches. So the church of Jerusalem had 12 apostles. The church of Antioch started with prophets and teachers. So listen carefully. Apostles, prophets, and teachers are called governmental gifts. Governmental gifts. Because they are the one that, that are called for leadership, direction, doctrine, preaching, and teaching. In the first century church. So apostles, prophets, and, and, and teachers were, were called and were positioned and they functioned in the leadership, in the direction, and giving doctrine in the church. So that's why we call them governmental gifts. Let, just, just write that governmental gifts. So the governmental gifts are elders gifted for leadership, direction, and doctrine. Preaching and teaching in the local house. So apostles, prophets, and teachers. Now understand, and I want to put balance here. An evangelist or a pastor can preach and teach a specific subject. But the governmental gifts were more prevalent in the ministry of the word in the gatherings of the saints. So last time we spoke about apostles. So last time we spoke about apostles. And apostles come from the Greek word apostolos. Which means the sent one. So Ephesians 4.11. Apostles are first mentioned. And in 1 Corinthians 12.28. Apostles again are first mentioned. So the word said. And God has set in the church. First apostle. The word first here is proton. Proton literally means first in time. In rank and in authority. So proton literally means first in time, in rank, and authority. So the apostle is the highly ranked general in the army of God for his capacity to usher in the church. Apostles are, are able to edify a church from nothing. They can go in a region and start from scratch and build a church. So an apostle can come in a region and establish a church where every saint and I will give that clarity. Every saint is identified, trained, mandated, and sent out to affect and shift the region for Christ. Now understand, the apostle is not a rookie. It, today we have people that call themselves apostles and they have not, they, they have not been in any other fivefold ministry gift uh, um, um, and, and they have not ministered. Uh, and, and, and have experience in bringing forth fruit but you are released as an apostle what a big mistake to have people released as an apostle without showing first fruit in their ministry now notice in Antioch in Acts 13 they had five they had different prophets and, 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 and teachers that were in that, church, in that church and the word said after they had ministered in their call, the Holy Spirit said, put aside Saul and Barnabas for the work that, that I have given them. Now understand, Saul, apostle, which becomes Apostle Paul, was first a teacher in, the, in Antioch. He had fruit, he had resolve. There's an issue now when people are released as apostles and have no resolve. They're rookie apostles. They just have their card with the name apostle and they have uh, their Facebook page with the name apostle, but they don't have resolve. It is not normal for people to be released as apostles without fruit. A lot of those that are apostles right now should give their ordination papers back. I said that in Chicago and I'm saying it again they should give back their ordination papers why because they don't have fruit it is a problem for you to be called apostle and we don't see the territorial authority that you have in the region an apostle has territorial authority I'm not talking about somebody because you tell me, okay, well, well, apostle, some people have established local churches and they have people. Yes, you have people, but no power and no authority in the region. So when we speak about an apostolic church, it's not just a church that have people that comes and clap one man and his wife, uh, uh, Lady Lucy, and, and, the, and the children to do ministry. We're talking about a powerful church where people come, they're identified, trained, mandated, sent out, and affecting every system 
system of society. This is an apostolic church. A lot of churches can be big and be bigly and strongly weak. So you have churches that you have a thousand people. You cannot find ten people that can truly minister. This is not apostolic. An apostolic church with a strong apostle. An apostle can establish a church that is strong. That the saints are identified, trained, mandated, and sent out. So the key to his call, the key to know the, the apostle is ra they raise strong local churches. Say that, strong. Strong local churches. Apostles don't work, don't raise up weak churches that have an audience that clap. Some some ministers today that call themselves apostles, I have a big issue with that. Because the, the, the anointing in the apostle, he has the capacity to reproduce himself. To, to, to reproduce himself and reproduce not copies but originals an apostle will raise originals in the church not everybody will speak like him not everybody will look like him not everybody will dress like him but he ha they have the, his dna and he can release them in their destiny so key to to the apostle the apostle is able to raise a strong local house and he has the capacity to set foundations in an in existing local church, local house. So some apostles uh, can raise up a strong apostolic church, but but some apostles are sent out to to set foundation to help churches grow in in doctrine in revelation. Some apostles can be sent out to lay the foundation of deliverance, to lay the foundation of, of spiritual warfare, to lay the the, the, the the foundation of apostolic structure. So they are sent out to lay foundations. In, so in, in, and those churches were raised in order to have territorial impact. Let us say that together. Territorial impact. Territorial impact. Territorial impact. An apostolic church has territorial impact and breakthrough in this region. Territorial impact. That's right, my daughter. Territorial impact. That's that's your niece that wrote that. Territorial impact. Uh, people from Ocala. Territorial impact. Prophet Samara. Territorial impact. That's right. Let, let us let us write that together. Territorial impact. An apostle can raise a church with territorial impact. I have to continue because today I want to touch one of my favorite gifts, the prophets, the prophet, the prophets. God said first apostles, secondly, secondarily prophets. The definition of the word prophet in Greek and in Hebrew help us understand the office of the prophet. Now, in the New Testament, which is written in Greek. The definition comes from the Greek word prophetes. Prophetes. From pro before femi declare. So the, the, the word prophetes literally means declare beforehand. To declare beforehand. I'm telling you, you need to bring me everybody that you know that's prophetic right now. Because clarity is being released tonight in the name of Jesus. Prophetes. So the new the, the definition for and the Greek word uh, for prophet is prophetes, which literally means to declare before, declaring it before it happens. So the Greek translation of prophet speaks more of the oratory capacity of the prophet, his capacity to prophesy. So the Greek translation for prophet speaks more prophetes speaks more of his capacity to prophesy, to predict. To say something before it happens. So a prophet come in the Greek version and the Greek translation of prophet speaks of his capacity to say things before they happen. The oratory side of the prophet. So a prophet out of this definition is he to whom God speaks by prophetic teachings, exhortations or decrees to edify Exhort, comfort, strengthen, warn, and warn, and reprove a saint, the people of God, a country, and a nation. I'm going to say this again. Just give me some love right there. He through whom God's, God speaks by prophetic teaching, exhortation, or decrees to edify, 
exhort, comfort, strengthen, warn, or rebuke, reproof. A saint, the people of God, a country, or a nation. So that's from the Greek word prophecies. Now the Old Testament definition. Listen right now. Be careful. Listen carefully. The Old Testament definition comes from the word, the Hebrew word nabi. Now the Hebrew definition carries a more complete understanding of the prophet in its definition. Now the Hebrew definition nabi views the prophet as much more than, than somebody that predicts. You see, Nabi sees the prophet 